Hi, hello lovelies. In this video, the brilliant Dr. Uplays is going to be looking at the structure and the function of the eye. So all of the different parts, their names and what they do. The eye. The eye is a sense organ that contains receptors sensitive to changing light intensities and the colour of light. The retina, this is the layer of light sensitive receptors at the back of the eye. When light hits these receptors, it absorbs the light and then it turns this into an electrical impulse, which it then sends along neurons to the brain, which receives the information and turns it into an image. Here is the optic nerve. That's where all of those nerves that carry the electrical impulses from the retina travel down and then to the brain. The sclera, this is the white outer layer of the eye that you can see as part of your eyeball. It's strong to protect the eye from damage and it helps to support all the structures inside. The cornea, this is a transparent layer that covers the pupil. It helps to focus the light into the retina because it's curved. So inside we have the lens, which is kind of a bag of transparent fluid, a sack of transparent fluid, and the pupil, which is the hole that light enters through into the eye. Around the pupil is the iris. These are the muscles that surround the pupil. The iris muscles control the size of the pupil by contracting or relaxing, and that also controls how much light enters the eye. The ciliary muscles and the suspensory ligaments. These hold the lens in place and control its shape so that it can focus the light. So let's have a closer look at what those iris muscles do and how they control the pupil size. So in bright light, you'll see I have a small, what we say contracted pupil. This is because the circular muscles of the iris are contracted and the radial muscles are relaxed. This causes the pupil to become smaller. This happens in bright light to, less, to let less light into the eye in order to protect the retina from damage. If too much bright light was to enter the eye at once, then it could cause those photoreceptors at the back of the eye to be damaged. In dim light or low light, the opposite happens. So the circular muscles relax, the radial muscles contract, and the pupil becomes larger, or we say it is dilated. This is so that more light enters the eye so a better image can be seen. This is helpful for you in dim light to make sure that you can see as best you can in order to make sure that you can be safe. So the main things here to think about the opposites. So in bright light, we've got contracted circular muscles, relaxed radial muscles and small pupil. In dim light, relaxed circular muscles, contracted radial muscles and large pupil. And then the bottom point for each one is the why, the reason why your pupil does this. Remember, this is a reflex response. So it's an example of a reflex response because you're not thinking about it. Your body does this automatically in order to keep you safe. Accommodation is the process of changing the shape of the lens to focus on far away or nearby objects. We've learned the word focus before when we looked at microscopes is to make sure that the image is not blurry. So when you're focusing on a nearby object, your ciliary muscles are going to contract these dispensary ligaments loosen, and this allows the lens to become thicker and strongly refract those light waves and point them to the back of the retina. So refraction, remember, is bending of the light. So we'll have looked at this in physics. And remember, the whole point of this is to make sure that we can focus the light that's reflected off the object onto the back of the retina so that we can see it. For far away objects, the opposite happens. So the ciliary muscles relax, the suspensory ligaments tighten, so that pulls the lens upwards and downwards, and it makes it thinner, basically thinner and flatter. This means there's less refraction, so it's not gonna refract the light as much, and therefore it allows it to still focus on the retina.
Eye defects occur when the light doesn't focus on the retina properly. There's two very common visual defects that some of you may have. So my two diagrams at the top are showing the normal way that we accommodate for nearby objects and the normal way that we accommodate for far away objects. If you suffer from hyperopia, it means you are long sighted. So although you can see far away objects really well if you're long sighted, your lens is too flat. So it can't refract the light enough. And so you can see from the diagram that the focus point of that light isn't actually focused on the retina. So this makes seeing nearby objects blurry. With myopia or short sightedness, which is what I have, the lens is the opposite. So the, actually the lens is too curved this time. So we're good at seeing objects from close up. So that's not a problem. But far away objects, when we get light reflected from them into our eyes, the lens is too curved. So it refracts the light too much. And you can see that the focus point of the light then is in about the middle of the eye. It's, no, it's nowhere near the retina. So this makes far away objects appear blurry. Hyperopia and myopia can be corrected using glasses containing either convex or concave lenses. So to correct hyperopia, we use convex lenses. So the convex lenses bend the light rays in or converge. So convex converge the light rays to focus the light on the retina. So it converges them together before they go through the lens. For myopia, we have to use concave lenses, so the opposite to convex. These bring light rays further apart, so they diverge the light rays before they enter the lens. That allows it to focus the light onto the retina. So as we age, the lens becomes less elastic, so less able to stretch, which means that it can't become thick enough to focus light from nearby objects. So this means that as you get older, your ability to accommodate nearby objects will get worse. So as we get older, most humans are gonna need some convex reading glasses in order to help them see things close up. There are new technologies now that give people more options to help correct their sight other than spectacles. Contact lenses, here's a picture of some of my contact lenses. So these work like glass lenses, but they're in contact with the eye. That's how they get their name. So they actually float just on top of the cornea. So you can see here, I've got my contact lens, which is the blue line that sits just on top of the cornea. It kind of floats on the liquid that's on the front of your eye. And you can see in the packet that you've got this round lens and you can see how it floats in liquid to keep it moist and flexible when it's in the packet. And then when you put it on your eye, it literally sits on a, a floats on a volume of liquid and then you can obviously remove it and then put it in the bin. Some people find that they dry out if you wear them for a long time. There's loads of different types of contact lenses and people can find the right one for them. You can also have laser eye surgery and that actually uses a laser to reshape the cornea. So by changing the curvature of the cornea, it changes how it refracts the light. So it's most commonly used for myopia, but it can be used for some hyperopia, but it depends on how bad your long sightedness is. You can also replace the lens with an artificial one through a small surgery. So either it can be completely replaced or it can actually just sit in front of the lens that is already there. And that can obviously help to change any ability to refract the light. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>